Hi you guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Torrance and in today's video, I know things are looking crazy, but Halloween is my favorite holiday of the year and this year I actually have a YouTube channel. So I wanted to do a tutorial on a few ideas that I have, including looks that I've worn in the past. And this is a look that I tried out last year. I got this idea from the amazingly talented Nikki Tutorials. She's queen of makeup here on YouTube and I'll make sure I leave her video linked right here above. And when I first saw her do this look, it was like, why hasn't anybody else come up with this idea? This is something I believe most people can achieve. It does take a little time to make sure you get the shadows right, but it's something that does not have to be perfect for people to get the idea. So make sure you all check out Nikki Tutorial's video after you watch mine. But if you would like to know how I achieved this look, just go ahead and continue to watch. Not sure what's going on with my camera, but I want to try to hurry up and jump into things before it shuts off again. I personally find this look easier to achieve if you start off with a full face. Many people figure if you're only gonna be wearing half a face, you can go ahead and just do that half. But I already have my makeup done, so if you want any information on this eyeshadow tutorial, I'll make sure I leave that video linked right here above. I'm currently wearing the Juvia's Place Topes palette because this video was inspired by Nikki Tutorials and she absolutely loves topes and golds. So I wanted to make sure I kept things rather soft, but still full coverage and glam because as you can see, we are wearing the works. Bright under eye, eyeshadow, brows, got to have it all going. But to make sure my hair does not get caught up in the way of things, I'm going to go ahead and tie it up and I'll be right back. Now that we have our hair tied up, the next step we want to do is carve out the area which we want to have our mask. Our main concern is going to be keeping at least one eye area completely in the mask, as well as the lips and the nose. So we're gonna wanna cut around this eye, come back, and then come back around this way. I've tried this look yesterday and tried to keep this entire side of my face in, but it makes it a little more difficult to tell that you're wearing a mask if you don't have skin behind this area exposed. So I'm gonna make sure I carve it out the same way Nikki did. And for this step, you wanna try to use something that's light enough to leave a shadow, but not so dark that it actually overpowers anything. So for me, I'm going to go in with the IT Cosmetics Brow Power Universal Eyebrow Pencil in the shade Universal Taupe. This was a sample that I received and I used to use it all the time. I was never able to completely use it up, but it'll be perfect for today. The first thing I want to do is come right here on the side of the nose and I'm going to come straight down and around. And I want this to come around the mouth around the chin and then come back up. And we don't have to worry about things being perfect. And we wanna make sure we get that brow in there. Come around and then back around like this. I wanna see where these are gonna meet up. As you can see, that's not a perfect line, but it doesn't have to be. And this area here is what we're gonna use for our mask. You can see this eye is going to be cut out of it, the entire chin area, and the outer areas of my forehead. The very next step is going to be removing your makeup from the outer perimeters, and you want to get as close to that line as you possibly can. I'm going to just fold up a makeup removing wipe and just go to town. I'm not really worried about things being perfect. Just worried about getting it off. And for the eye area, I wanna get as close as possible, but we're gonna use something a little stronger than this makeup removing light to remove the eye makeup. To remove my makeup, my favorite brand is Clinique. Their makeup removing wipes are okay, which is why this is the very last pack I'm gonna ever purchase from them. They just, to me, the cloths aren't thick enough and they don't put enough product on there, but I like these. But the star of their makeup removing line, this one here. Take the day off makeup remover for lids, lashes, and lips. This is an all-star product, honey. I like to take a cotton pad, soak it with the makeup remover, and press it directly on the lid. And 
And once you swipe off, you can see just how strong this stuff is. The longer you let it sit, the easier it'll be to wipe off. But because I'm in a race, we're going to hurry up and get this taken off now. Before we go to the next step, I want to cut away, go wash my hands, and then I'll be right back. Back with clean fingers, and now we're ready for the next step. For this look, we want to go in now and make shadows around the mask to give it a more realistic look. And I found the easiest way to do that is using a neutral eyeshadow palette. My palette of choice is going to be the original Tartlet palette, simply because it's an all matte palette and it has different shades of browns and blacks that we're going to need to make this look complete. We want to build our way up to the black shades. We don't want to start off there. So our first shade that we're going to use is going to be this one here, Wanderer. And to make sure we get a nice soft blend, we don't want to go in with smaller brushes at first. So I'm going to start off with this very large one here. This is the It Brushes for Ulta, the number 103 Blurring Concealer Brush. I just want to use this to make sure I can just lay down the product. I'm not really worried about the buff and the blend in the beginning. So we're going to take this, just load up our brush, make sure it is thoroughly saturated, tap off the excess product, and we're going to use this to buff directly around the edges of this. You want to make sure some of that product diffuses around the edges of the mask as well as around the outside. And you see that there? Right here, I haven't used any product and you can see that sharp line, but right here we have that brown buffing on the inside as well as the outside. And you just want to take that and go all around the entire perimeter of your mask. Just loading up our brush and helping diffuse that original line and get some shadow going. And this here, once again, it's going to soften up the edges and make building up the color to our actual shadows a lot easier later on. And I just dip, swipe a little bit, and then keep going back. And before we go to the next step, I'm just doing one last buff around the edges, just to make sure I like the way things look. Do a little more right here to soften that up. Now that you see we've softened up the edges of the lines, we want to go in now and give that shadow a little more dimension. And for that, we're going to take our It For Ulta brushes, the number 112 Precision Shadow Brush. And we're going to use that brush to apply a slightly darker brown, which is this shade, Dreamer. And we're going to go right in next to the edges of that, and we want to build up a slightly deeper color. As you can see, I just want to go in around the perimeter and make that line a little more noticeable. Don't worry about getting things perfect. Just try your best. Get close to the edge of that line that you previously drew. And this should make that line look a little bit darker. And once you have that color placed there, you wanna to try to just diffuse it out a bit. And because this brush is rather flat, what I like to do is lay it flat against the skin, run it down, and once I notice that the color has run out, I flip it to the other side and keep it going that way so I don't have to dip as often. And once I don't notice any more product on the brush, I'll go back in, try to buff, and diffuse the edges out a little bit more. And with this brush being smaller than that first one, it'll give us a stronger color payoff. And before you go to the next step, you always want to just go back and look and see what areas tend to be the lightest, what area may need a little more buffing and blending. And just go back in and diffuse those edges a little stronger. Now that we have even more dimension now, for the next step, we want to go in with our It Brushes for Ulta, the number 122 the angled liner brush. And for this step, we finally want to pick up our matte black, which is this shade here, Fashionista. Now this is the step you want to be the most careful with because we are using our absolute darkest shadow. And with black, things can go away very easily. So I recommend just going very slow, picking up product on your angled liner brush and trying to trace this line as very close to the edge right here as you can possibly get it. You want it to be right there 
where your dark brown ends and right before the lighter color of your foundation starts. The best place to put it is like right here along the edges. And you want to take your time and just do that all the way around. And as you all can see, my color is not perfect. We got blotchy spots here. Certain spots are thinner than others, but things do not have to be perfect, honey. You just have to have fun and do your best. Now to help give that a more realistic look, we want to diffuse the edges of that black. And to do so, we're gonna be using the number 124 Precision Smudger Brush. Gonna take this because it's small, sort of like a pencil brush, and use that to just buff out the edges of that black. We don't want to take it too far, but we just don't want those lines to be as strong as they appear here. And you're just going to go right around those edges and help soften that up. If you feel more comfortable using your precision shadow brush, go ahead and do so. I just really believe that you can get a more defined look using the smudger brush. Buff that back and forth. Just to soften it because we don't want a strong line. We want it to look more like a shadow. And right now I'm noticing a slight bit of difficulty buffing this out. So I'm going to coat my brush in that dark brown shade Dreamer and go back in. Oh yeah, see Dreamer is helping this act like a transition for it. Give me a slightly slaughter band. Going to try to use the larger brush just to get this done quicker. This precision shadow brush seems to be working better than the smudger brush. Because this area is so small, we need to go back in with that smudger brush just to get that line in this area diffused. Now for our very last step, I want to take this shade here, Free Spirit, and use that to clean up the sharp edges of my black line. And to use that, I'm going to use an even larger push liner brush. I'm going to be using the MAC 212 brush. And I'm going to take that, just load my brush up on both sides. And what I'm going to do is go on the inside where our foundation is and basically create a sharp line around that black there. I mean, just to help accentuate the shadows that are on the outside, we want to make sure the skin and the coloring on the inside is a little bit lighter. And I'm just basically scraping my brush across the shadow just so it all lands on one side of the brush. And just going right here and tracing along that black line. This is going to be barely noticeable, but it will help add a little bit of highlight to this look. Just pressing along the edges, slightly diffusing it. You don't have to do this everywhere, just anywhere you feel as if you've over blended that black shadow. This is basically like my way of helping clean that up. And you can see how by just adding that, it truly gave me a little extra oomph to make those lines look really sharp. And this step here is completely optional. I'm just doing it for a dramatic effect. I'm gonna take that very first large brush, that blurry concealer brush, and that lightest eyeshadow shade, Free Spirit, and I'm gonna buff around the edges of here just to help once again accentuate the color of that shadow. And then around the edges here, use that to just soften and lighten the edges. We don't wanna go all the way up to that brown. We just wanna go around here just because it's much lighter than my complexion, and it'll help that stand out even more. We already know when something's a lot lighter, it can give off an ashy tone. And because shadows have a very cool gray ashy tone to them, this will help that look a little more realistic. And just to take away any powdery residue that we have on our face, we're going to go ahead and spray with a little MAC Fix Plus. Let's dry this down. I'm going to give this a few more seconds to dry and then I'll be back to show you all the final look. Editing Taurus here just wanted to jump in and let you know, 
If you go in with a liquid black eyeliner around those edges a little more, very close in person, it doesn't look quite flattering, but at normal speaking distance and right here on camera, that extra black line really helps set this look off. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that step two. Add you a black liquid liner after your black eyeshadow, cause baby, that's really what gives it this structure. All right, back to what we was talking about beforehand. And this is the final look. I want to go ahead and show you all what this looks like from different angles, just so you can see. This is not something that is very difficult to achieve. Although my look isn't as beautiful as Nikki Tutorials, honey, I haven't been doing this makeup as long as she has. I don't have the skill and talent she has, but this is something I believe almost anyone can achieve. Once again, it does take a little bit of time, but this is something where things do not have to be perfect in order to turn out looking fabulous. I absolutely love the way things look. If I could change anything, more than likely I would have just done a more dramatic eye, but I already had my makeup done. And staring into the mirror right now, the only thing I think I would add is a little bit of black liner to this look. And just to see what things look like, I may go ahead and do that as well and go ahead and add that clip later on. But I'm really happy for this and I hope that you all really enjoy it. If you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Also, leave me a comment down below letting me know what plans you have for Halloween this year. Halloween is my favorite holiday of the year, so I absolutely love planning my makeup. This is only one tutorial that I plan on doing for the week of Halloween, so make sure you all stay tuned for that. The next look I plan on doing will be another mask look, but it will be a little more difficult to achieve. So I hope you all are excited about that. But with nothing else, I hope you all remember to practice, continue to stay blessed, and until next time, goodbye YouTube.